Hey friends, you are crafting with Kim Byers and today we are cutting fabric with our Cricut Maker, with our Cricut Explore. We are going to applique some projects. So this is going to be new for a lot of you guys. So maybe you've never cut you know, fabric with your machine before um, and you've just done a lot of vinyl and iron on and paper and that's all great, but those machines are capable of more. So today I'm gonna teach you how to back material so material of your choice, I'm gonna show you how to back it, and then we're gonna take it over to the machine, we're gonna cut it out, and then we're gonna use that to apply an applique to some really, really cute things. Now, we are not gonna use a sewing machine today. So we are going to do no sew applique, and we are going to do hand stitch applique. Um, we will get to you know applique with the you know with the sewing machine, but we're just not going to do that today. So we're going to take baby steps <laughs> into this. So for a lot of you, you've probably never cut fabric with your machine before. So that's where we're going to start. So I'll take you over to the craft table. We'll look at everything that we're using. We'll hop into Cricut Design Space really quick, and I'll show you the designs that we're working with, and then we'll hop back over to the craft table, bond the fabric, put it on the mat, cut it out and then apply it to our projects. Okay, so if you have never left me a comment or talked to me down below, I would love to hear from you guys. If you're not big into you know, typing out things, give me a thumbs up, let me know you were here, and I would love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and join me for all my future videos. All right guys, let's get going. Okay, so here we are on the craft table. These are the things that we're going to use today. So we have these beautiful fabrics, and these are just 100% cotton. I have um, these darling little black bags that I got from Target. These were a dollar a piece over in the gift wrap section. And then I picked up some really pretty napkins um, at Home Goods. So we're going to put an applique on this for my Easter table. And these are actually going to be little Easter gifts for my nieces and nephews. And then I have my machine. So you can use your explore you can use your maker you can use either one of those to cut um, this fabric and with the explore it's going to be the fine point blade with the maker you can use the rotary blade the other important thing that we're going to use is heat and bond so heat and bond can be um, added to your fabric with an iron or if you have easy press um, we can use the easy press as well okay and the other thing is is we're going to use a green mat so that's not shown here and then I just got this really pretty um, glass craft mat and so I'll show you more about that when we get back over to the craft table but for now I want to go into Cricut Design Space and I want to show you what we're making and how to set that up Okay, so here we are in Cricut Design Space and I've just opened up a new canvas and brought in the things that I want us to work with today. So when I create new projects, um, one of the very first things that I do will go into images, or excuse me, into shapes, and I will pick a shape of whatever it is I'm working with. So these um, little squares or rectangles are a representation of the bag that we're putting the monogram on. Um, and then this is a representation of the napkin that we're going to be making. So all I did is I went into shapes and I chose a square and then you can just unlock them to so this lock here. You unlock that and then you make it the size um, of whatever your bag or napkin or t-shirt or whatever it is that you're working with. Um, and I like to go into colors and then change the color so that I can get an idea of what the finished product is going to look like. And so once I've done that, you can then lock it um, once you have it to the right size. I'm just going to delete this since we already have these. So in my set, I have a pink, a yellow, and a blue bag, and then I have multiple um, blue napkins. So what I wanted to do is put um, each child's initial on their, on their little Easter bag in um, some really beautiful fabrics. And so I chose a font that was very chunky. Um, and if you click, let's click on this one, this is Arial Black. So it's a very simple um, font, but I think it's gonna work great and it's gonna show more of the pattern of the actual fabric. And so what I did there is I just you know brought in um, in text, brought in a text box and then put the letter. Um, so I'm gonna have to get some more bags because I wanna do some of these for my sons as well and put little cash inside of them inside of their Easter baskets. And yes, I still do Easter baskets. <laughs> my boys indulge me. Um, so what we're gonna do though is then I would have the letter and then I could go up into colors. Um, let me see, there we go. And then I would go up into colors and change it to whatever color um, or you know, somewhat color of the fabric. So, 
and then that way I would be able to take that letter and then make it as large or as small as I wanted to. And I like doing it this way because then I can get a better idea of like how large that letter should be. Instead of just measuring the bag um, and envisioning it in my head, I can kind of put it on the um, canvas and get an idea for that. Okay, so then what we're going to do is once we have um, these letters set up and then for the napkins I chose this sweet little bunny a very simple silhouette shape of the bunny again I want to see as much of that fabric as possible um, and so once you have those things and I just went into uh, images and searched bunny to get this guy then you can go over into your layers and turn off or delete um, each one of these because we don't actually want to cut those out we just wanted those for the purpose of sizing our project. So I'm going to delete that one and then I will turn that one off. Now for the bunny I actually have six um, napkins and so I'm just going to duplicate it six times. Actually well it's fine. We're going to duplicate it six times and you can do this for those of you who um, have worked with multiple projects before you know when you're cutting the same thing you can do this over on the mat but for today we just put it here now I don't want this a to be the same color as the bunny because they are going to be cut on two different fabrics so I'm going to click on my a and just change my change my color okay so now we have um, each one of the bags and we have the bunnies and we can go ahead and take these guys to matte. Okay, so our matte pops up and we have our pink, we have our yellow, we have our blue, and then we have all our little bunnies here on the purple. Now, I have said to you guys before, when you're working with heat, you mirror an image. And this is true when you're using sublimation, when you're using iron-on. But for what we're doing today, we're not going to mirror image our shapes because we are going to back this fabric and then we are going to apply it you know, face up to um, our napkins and our, and our little um, fabric bags. So we're gonna leave the design just as it is. Okay, so before we move on, there's one thing I like to do to just save some time on um, the cutting process. So we're going to go back into each one of our mats, and what I want to do is I'm going to move this T into this corner. So I'm going to cut um, my A in this corner, I'm going to cut my T in this corner, my A, I'm going to move We'll just move it all the way down into the bottom corner. And the reason I'm doing this is because I would like to just put all the fabrics on one mat. And I'll show you how to do this, but basically just save yourself some time. Instead of going back and forth to the craft table applying new fabric, you can apply all three of these colors at one time. Um, and then because they're placed in separate corners, you're going to be able to just unload the mat and reload it right there. And it'll go over to the other corner and cut. Um, the other fabric. So it's just a time saver. So now that we have that set, we can go ahead and continue. So our maker is connecting. And now on our materials, um, you most likely don't have your cotton, your bonded cotton already here in this area of your favorites. So let's go into browse all materials. And then I'm just going to type the word cotton. So it comes up with nine results. Now these are nine results for the Cricut Maker. If you have a Cricut Explorer and you put that you know machine in as your machine of choice, it's going to pop up and tell you how many results you have. So you're going to have some of these, you may not have all nine. But we're going to be using the Cotton Bonded. So with the Maker, you're going to be able to um, use a fine point blade, which is the same blade you would use with your Explore, but you also have the option of going into Edit Tools and choosing the rotary blade if you have a rotary blade. And I do, so that's the one I'm going to use today. Apply. Okay, so now we're ready to hop back over to the craft table and put our fabric on the mat. Okay, so here we are back on the craft table, and the first thing we're going to do is cut out our materials. So I need, um, for the napkins, I need roughly 12 inches by 7 inches of this beautiful um, floral pattern. And then for these three, I'm going to cut out three by three. So I changed up my materials just a little bit um, to match my little bags. I just think these polka dots are adorable. And so what we're going to do is use this craft mat, which is magnetic, by the way. I'm really excited about this and I'm going to be able to measure off my fabric and cut it out. But I want to show you guys this. 
So this is a glass board studio mat. Um, I got this just about a week ago. I'm really excited about it. But basically, I'm not sure how well you can see this on camera, but it has the grids inside of the glass and it's magnetic. So these come with it and so they'll hold my fabric down. I'm planning on doing a lot more um, fabric projects and so I just thought this was a really uh, fun investment to be able to work with. So what I'm gonna do though is I'm going to take my material and I'm gonna be able to hold it in place, which is just fantastic, so that it doesn't shift and move on me. And then I'm going to be able to measure that out. So this board is uh, 16 by 22. Now there are multiple sizes. There are smaller ones and bigger ones. Um, and there's even one that is a bright white. So if you have a difficulty um, you know, seeing, the bright white was really, really cool, but I just loved this, this color. Um, so I do love that the bright white was so easy to see the grids, but you can actually ask them when you order to make those lines um, like more vibrant so that you can see them easier, um, which I thought was a really cool feature that they do. Okay, so what I need for this particular one is 12, and I'm, it's great, although I, you can probably see there's a salvage right here, but I have, this is 12 inches, and so I really just need seven. Okay, so I'm actually going to pull this slightly over because I wanna make sure that I'm not counting that salvage when I'm doing my cut. And so here's my seven inch mark. I'm actually gonna use a third one because I can see here is my seven inch. Give me a guide. Okay, and so now let's cut out our material, our three by three. So I can put my fabric to the corner and here's my three mark, my three mark. So I think I'll use a couple of magnets to hold it in place. Now that we have all the fabrics cut out, we need to cut out our heat and bond. So what we wanna do is we wanna take our heat and bond and we wanna cut it slightly smaller than the piece of fabric, just slightly, because we want to make sure that we don't have sticky residue on the outer you know, sides of the fabric. So what we're gonna do is I even have a piece of parchment paper here. Um, we're going to cut this out and then we are going to bond it to this fabric and we are gonna protect our Easy Press mat um, using the parchment paper. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut out our materials. Okay, so now we have our heat and bond cut out for each piece of fabric. So what we wanna do is we want to take our Easy Press or your iron and just clean up the fabric. So like this one has a really big crease in the middle of it, so we wanna press that down, preheat the fabric, and then we will apply our heat and bond to the back of that fabric. Okay, so we're just gonna put the heat and bond out of the way for a moment. Just get that crease out of our fabric and now we have um, preheated the fabric. It's slightly warm. I'm just gonna put my parchment paper down just to make sure that I don't get anything on it. And actually, I'm gonna sandwich it. So there we have our fabric and so now I have my heat and bond. Now again, guys, you don't want it to go off of the sides. You want it to be um, have a little bit of an edge all the way around. And so this pink one's gonna be really close. Okay, and so then I'm going to place that on top so it doesn't get on my Easy Press or my iron. And this only takes two to three seconds. Now when you apply it to your material, it will be eight seconds. So that is what it says on the packaging for cotton. So it was a really, really quick process. So we'll do that for each one of our fabrics. Just make sure we preheat. Okay, now that the heat and bond is attached, next up is for us to go ahead and put this on the mat. Remove our items out of the way. Bring in our mat. So we'll cut out our bunnies first. And I, this fabric was a little bit long. I, I didn't cut that one end. And so we're going to place it on the mat. And I'm gonna use a brayer, and just make sure that it's secure. So it's a little longer over there than 12 inches, but I don't actually have bonding 
on that. Okay. And so when I put on these fabrics, what I'll do is I'll put them in the correct corner and then take it over to the machine and cut it all at one time. And so what it will happen is I will cut this one corner, eject um, the mat from the machine, and then just reload it just right there, and it'll go over and cut this one, then it'll go over and cut the other one. Okay, so let's go to the machine. Okay, so here we are on the maker, so we're just gonna load the mat. And then we are actually going to switch out our blade. So this fine point blade will work, but I do have a rotary blade. Oh, knife blade, rotary blade. Okay, so we'll open up the clamp, take out our fine point, pop in our rotary, okay, and then cut. So we're back on the craft table and so our machine has cut out our first applique. So we just wanna take our fabric from the edge and just pull it away. Look at those darling bunnies. That's so sweet. Did that not turn out just so dang cute? Look at all that pattern. This is what I was talking about, like picking something that's chunkier, kind of a silhouette. That is just so, so cute. Okay, so we'll take the rest of our bunnies off and then we will put on all of our other fabrics and do another cut. Okay, so now we're going to place our fabrics on for the next three cuts. And I just used my scraping tool to get the backer off of the mat. So I'm gonna put my pink in this corner Use my brayer to put it down. I'm gonna put my yellow over in this corner. And I like doing corners. I mean, you can use the snap mat, but I like using corners just because it's so easy. The whole purpose of doing it this way is to save time, so. Okay, and then I will put my blue down in this corner. Okay, and then we'll cut it out just like before. Okay, so now we've cut them all out and all we need to do is take them off of the mat just like before. And here's the thing, if when you're working with fabrics, keep a pair of scissors handy just in case there's any stray threads that wanted to, you know, stay attached. Here we go. Oh, this is gonna be cute, 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 cute. So we'll get the rest of these off the mat and then we'll move on to putting these onto our bags. Okay, so now it's time to press. Now when we took the uh, materials off of the mat, some of them um, lost the backer. This one didn't, so we just wanna make sure we peel that clear white, I guess it's really more white, uh, backer off of the fabric, okay? And so then we can see sort of that sticky residue on the back. And if you have any stray um, threads, this would be the time to you know get those off. Okay, and so now what we wanna do is take our measuring tape and we just wanna find our center point on our little bags. So this is five inches. This is two and a half inches to the center point. And so a, the A will be really easy because there's that small little slit there. And I want about an inch to the bottom. Um, that way I can easily duplicate this with the other bags. So I'm just gonna take a piece of parchment just to protect my easy press. And the directions say eight seconds. So this is gonna be quick. Okay, lift straight up, put that back on the cradle. And voila, it is perfect and done. Isn't that great? That is so stinking cute.
Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing with our bunnies and our napkins. Um, and if you are interested in like maybe embellishing them a little bit more, when we get done with our napkins, we could always take um, some cross stitch thread and do an embellishment around them. We can either outline them, we could put little noses on them, we could put little bunny tails, um, just depending on what you might want to do. The quick and fast, you know, easy way is of course the way we just did it with the bags. So we're just using heat to apply, um, but then I think it would be a lot of fun to add a little bit more to this. So this is about four and a half inches across. So if I have about an inch on either side of my bunny, that should work perfectly. We'll get his little bottom straight. So from nose, so from his bunny tail over and his nose over. So that's only about a half inch. Let's see, this is about three, almost an inch. So maybe we will pull him back just a little. And then just so that it's easy for us to duplicate it with all the others, I'm going to make him an inch from the bottom. Okay, so let's see. So guys, my philosophy is measure and then measure again, right? Just to make sure. Okay, that's about perfect. So we're going to do the same as before. We're going to put our little piece of parchment paper down and then press. And I'm going to move this guy out of the way just so there's no heat. Okay, and then we'll do eight seconds. Okay, lift straight up, put that back on the cradle, and he's in place. Isn't that sweet? I love that he is a silhouette and he's kind of a chunky design, so you get a lot of that fabric. And then if you want, you could take some, um, again, some cross stitch thread. You could use some beautiful different colors. I have some pinks and things if we wanted to do like his nose um, or even just to outline him or like a mint green to outline him. Um, both of those would be beautiful. Maybe even this deeper pink, so sweet. So since this is a napkin, I'm just going to add um, a little bit of a nose to him just because it has to go through the washer. So a very subtle, cute little nose. But if this was on the bag, um, you could, you know, outline him. You could even do a small stitch around his neck and then have it um, string out the front and, you know, tie a little bow. Something that you weren't going to be washing um, would be so much easier to embellish further. But for this, I am just going to pick up one layer of the napkin and I'm going to put him a tiny little nose right there on the end. Now just know that whenever you use this backer it does make that very thick. So um, if you want to stitch like an outline around the bunny, I would suggest using a very sharp needle. And this one is a cross stitch uh, needle so it's you know a little duller. But just go, I went three times on that last one. Give him this cute little nose. And then just tie it off in the back. Okay, so what did you think? Did you enjoy that? That was so much fun and I, I love working with fabrics because there's so many beautiful fabrics um, and I am learning to sew. So for those of you who would love to know how to sew but don't know how, I am learning at the elbow of my mom. She's amazing. She can really sew super well but she does not want to be on camera. <laughs> I mean, I can, I can totally understand that. So she is teaching me and I'm writing down all the questions that I'm having about, you know, how to do a million different things and kind of learning from, you know, the beginning up. And so I'm writing all those down and I'm going to do a little series about sewing, like from the basics, from the very, very beginning. And she is going to be with us um, probably more in spirit and then just like with me and guiding me to make sure that I, you know, get all the things right. Um, but she will um, be teaching us basically how to sew. So I'm really excited about this. I have been asking her to do this for years um, and it just never worked out. And so now we are going to make this happen. It's going to be so great. Okay, so um, if you would love to learn how to sew, you know, like from basics up, um, just leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you about that and I hope that you enjoyed today and I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and join me for all my features. See you!